I've got him. Jesus, 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 I've got him. And the great I am. Long as I've got King Jesus. Long as I've got King Jesus. Oh, long as I've got him. Don't be the mighty God's house again tonight. Welcome to South Haysville Church of God. I'm Charlie Lamb. I uh, just hope you came to praise the Lord. Uh, you know, God is worthy to be praised. You know, Pastor preached this morning a wonderful message, you know, about what Jesus did for us. And uh, Sister Sharon and I was talking, she watched online, we was talking about, you know, can you imagine Joseph of Arimathea, he went and took the body of Jesus down. What mangled mess that body was. He did all that for us. All of that for us. For you know, we we should like he said we should have been one been uh, on the cross with our sins, but he took our uh, sins on his uh, body. We pray can't praise him enough for it. We've got a lot to pray about tonight. Uh, remember Josiah? He uh, developed a migraine this morning. I heard him tell Sister Blanche that he's getting ready to leave. He had a headache, so God's able to touch him and deliver him from that migraine. Yes, Continue to remember little Gabriel. I you know I thank God for that little young man to come this morning being anointed. God's able to touch, you know, God, he rewards faithfulness, you know, and he came here to the, yeah, this morning believing he was going to get a touch, and I'm believing that God touched him, only time and eternity with hell. Bri Brianna's uncle, brain aneurysm, let's pray for him, that God touch him, God's able to touch. Continue to remember uh, Junior, Sister Blanche's husband, uh, he needs a touch. He needs a touch in his body. God still works miracles. Right. We can look at Sister Blanche. That's a miracle sitting right there. Right. Uh, remember, continue to pray for Brother Baker and Sister Jane. Uh, continue to remember Sister Sharon. Uh, pray for uh, Brother Scott and Sister Ashley. God will give them traveling mercy as they come back tomorrow. Uh, they're on the uh, anniversary trip. Continue to pray for uh, Sister Chastity. Uh, pray for Sister Lois. Uh, her family, her mother died this morning, so remember her, that family, you know, if you've lost a loved one, you know, you want that uh, comfort that God provides. And uh, pray for Brother Zach, he needs a touch in his body, had some dental work, and so he's had, he needs a touch. Pray for uh, Richard, Sister Sandra's brother-in-law, he needs a touch, uh, <coughs> he's in very serious condition, needs God to touch him. Also remember Sister Ball, she needs a touch in her body. Uh, God is a great big God, and what concerns us concerns God. We bring it to him in faith and believing. He said, when you pray, believe that you might receive. So let's stand tonight and go to the Lord in prayer and believe for these requests. Pray for Branson. He's got sinus headaches. And God will touch him and heal him. Precious Heavenly Father, I've got peace, peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. Oh, 
speak not, Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. And you know when they were with one accord in one place, what happened? The Holy Ghost fell. Right. And that's why I want us tonight to be in one accord in one place right here tonight. Yes. The Holy Ghost might fall and just baptize us all fresh and anew. You know, we know that the Holy Ghost will come. You know, we just need to have ourselves prepared. They were prepared. Those disciples, they tarried, right. and when they tarried and they prepared, the Holy Ghost came and fell, and he will again tonight. This time, let's receive our tithe and offering and get our ushers to come. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Matthew, would you pray over this time of worship? We bless you for your giving tonight. This time I have Sister Albright to lead us in a congregation. Amen. If you'd like to stand, we'll, we'll sing victory in Jesus. Yes. Amen.
remember when you received that victory in Jesus? Mine was October, I mean, in April of 1982. You know, I remember when I went down to the altar and asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins. He changed me. I, I, I wasn't like I was before. If a person is still living like they did before, there was no change. I doubt their salvation. Right. But if, when you have that victory, you know you've got victory. Praise God. Right. This time I'm turning to service. I pass to Brother Shelton. Thank you, Brother Shelton. God bless you. Amen. Give Brother Charlie a hand of appreciation. What a wonderful job he does. I appreciate him. I want to say thank you again to Brother Albright and Brother Charlie who helped out uh, while we were away. Thank you again. They did a wonderful job. I was just blessed to be able to watch it online and to uh, just feed on the word of God. Now, I love to preach. I tell you, I love to preach more than I like to eat, and I love to eat. I love to preach more. And uh, sometimes it's a wonderful thing just to sit back and take in the word of God, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed hearing them, and you know, anytime a man speaks from the word of God, it ought to bring joy to the heart of a child of God, a Christian. It ought to be the most wonderful thing in the world to hear the preaching and the teaching of the word. That's how we grow. We grow from hearing the word and applying the word in our lives. Now, if you just hear it and you don't apply it, you're not going to go anywhere with God. But if you will eat the word, and when you get that word digested, it'll call you can't help but grow. You don't have to be lean in your spirit or spiritual matters. We can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Can you say amen? So good to see each one of you here again tonight. We do love you. I was thinking, <clears throat> Brother Charlie was listing off the ones sick. It'd probably be easier just to pray for the ones who are not. Just to name them. Is that right? We've got so many people sick right now, and we just need prayer. And I'm glad that we're not calling on some kind of God made of wood. There are people who literally pray to gods that are made of wood. Brother Keith Speed said, i got to get in this message. Brother Keith Speed said he was over in Africa. And he saw a tree there. And they had a fence, a wire around that tree. And said there was blood there at the bottom base of that tree. And he asked his interpreter, what in the world is all that? He said they keep that tree blocked off because they worship that tree as a god. And they offer chicken blood to that tree as a sacrifice to worship a tree. <clears throat> now you can pray to a tree all you want for healing. It might cover you from the sun in the sun in the summertime, shade you from the sun, but it ain't gonna do anything to heal your body. It ain't gonna do anything to help your family that's in trouble. It's not gonna do anything to help your marriage, it's not gonna do anything to help your nerves, it's not gonna do anything to help you get to heaven. You can worship whatever you want, but there's only one that can hear us and help us. That is the true living God. Can you say praise the Lord? I'm glad when we pray for the sick that it doesn't fall on deaf ears. That we're praying to a God that hears us and promises that he'll help us. Amen. Let's keep praying for all these that are sick right now for various reasons. And uh, let's pray for our churches. I read a, a, a startling statistic this week. Now, you know, whether it's true or not, I don't know. Time's going to tell. But it said within 18 months <clears throat> from when this COVID started. Now, I ain't going to talk about that much. I don't want to focus on COVID. I'm about tired of hearing about COVID. They said within 18 months from when this started that one in five churches will close their doors. One in five. Because people won't come back and people won't give to support it. Now I'm determined if we have to, you know, we're not going to let that happen here. This is God's church. I don't worry over that. When I feel it starting to come up, I just remind myself this is not my church. This is your church. And they said that 30% of people who attended church before this stuff will not return back to church. They're not going to come back. I told you this morning that when this is over, it's going to be a lot of rebuilding in a lot of places. But I'm glad that as long as there's people out there and the people will work, the church will work, we'll win souls to the kingdom of God. Amen. We'll keep working and keep laboring and keep going forward till the Lord comes. Can you say praise the Lord? How many here love this Lord who sacrificed what he sacrificed on the cross that we preached about this morning? I'm so glad for the price that he paid for us. Genesis chapter 5 tonight and chapter 6. Just hold your spot right there in Genesis 6. Back up to Genesis 5. I had another message prepared and God just, I was praying yesterday and the Lord just touched my heart and moved me another direction here. So I want to just obey him tonight. 
pray this message will be a help to us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those watching us online. Sister Ball sent me a text after service, and she said she was worshiping the Lord in her home this morning over the sacrifice of this Savior. Amen. I'm glad if you can't be here due to sickness, I'm glad you can still watch and worship God right there in your home. Amen. I know others were watching this morning and just worshiping the Lord right there where they stood. Amen. God's a good God. Genesis 5, begin reading in verse 21, please. <clears throat> the Bible said, And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. Now, Enoch was sixty-five when he got right with God and started following the Lord. And for the next 300 years, he served the Lord and he walked with God according to the Bible. Verse 24 said, And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. He walked with God and he was not, for God took him. And I want to bring you over to Genesis chapter 6 and read verses 8 and 9. And we're going to pull our thought from these verses tonight. <clears throat> the Bible says, But Noah, how many has ever heard the story of Noah? But Noah found grace in the eyes of the, of the Lord. This is the first time that this word is used in the Bible. The word grace, the first occurrence of this word. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect. That word perfect means blameless in his generation. And again we read, and Noah walked with God. Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. Then the Bible says in the next chapter, in Genesis 6, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and that Noah was a just man and a perfect man, a blameless man in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Enoch walked with God. Noah walked with God. Are you walking with God tonight? May God add his blessings to his red word as you're seated. You'll help us for the next little while. <clears throat> the help of the Holy Ghost. I want to talk to you on this thought simply as uh, the Lord's laid upon our heart here. Keep walking with God. Keep walking with God. <clears throat> when we read our scriptures here tonight, we find that both Enoch and Noah have something in common. The fact is that they were both delivered from the perils and the trials of their world. The Bible tells us that with Enoch, that Enoch walked with God and he was not. God took him out of this world. Here's a man who's going about his day-to-day -day life and suddenly he's gone. God took him out of that wicked world at that time. The Bible tells us with Noah, Noah dealt with the same kind of wickedness in his day. The Bible says, rather than God taking Noah out of the world, that God destroyed the world that was around Noah and spared him in that time. With both of these men, the Bible shows us that they found the mercy and the grace of God in their days. Now, this is what I want you to understand about Enoch and Noah. The Bible shows us that they found his mercy, they found the grace of God, but it was not because they did any great thing. It was not because these men were super, super spiritual men, superstars of their days, but the Bible simply says that both of them, that they walked with God. I want to tell you what a wonderful testimony that is for any man, woman, or boy and girl to be able to say today that I am walking with the Lord. I believe that in our day as we live right now, we live in a world of perils. We live in a world of trials. But I want to tell you, I believe that, that the key to great victory and the key to continuing in this journey, if you've begun this race, uh, and victory for the Christian is that we continue to walk with the Lord. Now, I know that, you know, th those that are going to be victorious, those that are going to see heaven, uh, are not those who never struggle. Those that walk in victory, those that's going to know what it is to be with the Lord one day, uh, 
are not those who never have hardships in this life. Not those who never get discouraged or even at times maybe feel like giving up. Matter of fact, I, I know some great Christian people who live on this earth right now who dealt with all of these things in their Christian walk. They've struggled at times. They've been discouraged along the way. Maybe even been times they felt like giving up. But I believe that victory belongs to those who always in the midst of troubles in the midst of times of discouragement and persecution, uh, in the midst of ridicule and in the midst of family problems and, and peer pressure, uh, those in the midst of every kind of conceivable hindrance, and there will be uh, every kind of conceivable hindrance uh, to try to stop us in this journey, uh, but yet they somehow just continue to walk with the Lord. Now listen, they may not be leaping right now. Uh, they may not even be running right now. But as long uh, as they keep walking with God, as long as they stay in the race, uh, as long as they keep their affection set on things above, uh, as long as they stay the course, uh, listen, they may get knocked down. They may struggle at times. Uh, they may feel overwhelmed with discouragement. Uh, but the ones that are going to know Christian victory are uh, will always be those uh, who get right back up, knock the dust off, uh, and just keep right on walking with God. Just keep right on uh, going forward with the Lord. Can somebody shout amen tonight? Uh, I'm telling you, they may go through some low valleys. Uh, they may face some dark nights. Uh, they may stumble along the way. Uh, but somehow, by the help of God, uh, they get right back up. Uh, they get right back in line with the Lord and they just keep right on moving forward they keep right on growing in the grace of God those are the ones that's going to know Christian victory in this race somebody lift your hands and give him praise tonight <laughs> hallelujah to God I want to be one of those that just keep walking with the Lord no matter what I'm telling you some of the best Christian people I know have struggled in the journey. Some of the best Christians I know have, have got frustrated at times. Some of the best Christians I know have, have, have become uh, struggled and, and fought and had to just scratch their way and claw their way through. Uh, but yet they just kept on moving forward with God. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, uh, if you practice that, if you do that, uh, no matter what, listen to me. Uh, when you stumble, when you fall in the way, that old devil's going to always be there to accuse you and say well you blew it now you might as well just give up but let me tell you something I, okay, where sin does abound uh, the grace of God does much more abound uh, and if you get right back up uh, if you just focus on the Lord of glory uh, he'll see you through every trial every hardship uh, every obstacle every struggle in the way uh, the grace of God uh, will see you through can you shout amen tonight there are folks that have their minds made up there are folks that have got their hearts set on heaven and they're going to make heaven their home no matter what they're determined that they're going to go there they refuse to give up they refuse to lay their armor down they may not be running right now come on now I believe I've said it before. They may not be running like that hare. They may be moving more like that tortoise. Uh, amen. But something down in their heart uh, causes them to keep on going, uh, to keep moving forward. Uh, they, listen, they may get knocked back a step or two, uh, but they get it squared away and they just get right back in there uh, and keep pressing in. Uh, if you live your life that way for the Lord, uh, you're going to cross that finish line. Uh, you're going to make it to heaven uh, if you are determined no matter what uh, I'm going to get up I'm going to go forward with God uh, I'm going to live my life for the Lord uh, I choose to walk with the God of glory can you say amen tonight hallelujah to God brother Dean give me a little more monitor please I feel like screaming shout a little bit tonight the Bible shows us that our relationship with God has always been one of a walk. Romans 6 and 4 says, Therefore, 
we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Romans 8 and 1 said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 13, 13 and 14 says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but pitch ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. 1 Corinthians seven seventeen says, But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. Second Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Galatians 5 and 16 said this I say then. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'm telling you from the moment that we are born again. From the moment that change happens that brother Charlie was talking about. Our lives are changed. We begin to serve the Lord. I'm telling you we are to move forward with God and not to sit still. Amen. We can't afford to sit down and do nothing uh, in this race. We can't afford just to sit down uh, and surrender. But the Holy Ghost uh, is always working in our lives. Uh, amen. Growing us. Uh, drawing us ever still closer uh, to the Lord of glory. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, nobody has an excuse uh, not to go to heaven. Uh, we've got the Word of God that's a lamp under our feet uh, and a light under our paths. We've got the Holy Ghost uh, that leads us and guides us uh, in all truth. Uh, we've got God the Father, God the Son uh, and God the Holy Ghost on our side. Uh, and if you want to make it to heaven, uh, you can make it uh, if you walk all with God. Somebody shout amen tonight. It is the intention of the Holy Ghost. It is the intention of the Spirit of God that we're continually progressing in the Spirit. Growing in the grace of God. Moving forward with the Lord of glory. We are to continually be moving toward that goal of heaven. And spending our eternity there with the Lord. Now, I know, you know, some people, they just seem like they're just flying high all the time. But the reality of it is in this Christian race, I'm telling you, we all go through discouragement at times. Come on now, we all face hardships in this way. We all face high mountains and low valleys at times. I'm telling you, God's given us everything that we need to make it through every low valley. God's given us everything we need to face the high mountains. God's given us everything that we need to go through this time of this pandemic. I'm telling you, nobody has to quit because of COVID. Nobody has to give up because of the darkness of this time. The Bible said if God be for us Who can be against us We can make it through Because the Lord is on our side Can you give him a hand of praise tonight Woo! Hallelujah to God Nobody has to quit Nobody has to give up Nobody has to lay their armor down We have everything that we need to make it to hear him say a job well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I thought about this yesterday. I had a message prepared, something completely opposite of this. And I believe God brought me over to these scriptures yesterday, over here yesterday morning. I know these are hard times right now. I don't know if there's ever been a times that I can remember, Brother Charlie, maybe there has, 
But I, I just don't remember it. I, I don't remember a time when Brother Charlie or even Brother Albright or, or, or Brother Scott stood up here and opened up a service and, and just named off name after name after name uh, of people that are dealing with sickness right now uh, and things that they're dealing with in their homes uh, and what Christians are facing right now. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, I've said this many times uh, and I want to say it here again tonight. Uh, whether you're in this building, whether you're watching online, uh, you may be struggling right now. Uh, you may be backed up against it right now. Uh, it may feel hard right now. Uh, but no matter what, uh, don't you lay your armor down. Uh, no matter what, don't you give up. Uh, no matter what, don't you look back. Uh, don't you go back on God. Uh, you just hold on. Uh, you just tie a knot in the rope uh, and know the Lord of glory uh, is going to show up. Uh, if you can't do anything thing but stand. You stand right there in faith. God's going to give you the grace to walk on and to make it through every trial, every hardship, every trial of the journey. Can you shout amen tonight? Hallelujah. Oh my God, my God. If your hands all over this house tonight. I don't know what you're dealing with here, but God does. I don't know what you're dealing with watching online, but God does. God knows where we are. God knows what we're facing. God knows what we're up against. And I'm telling you, friend, with God, we can overcome everything. With God on our side, we can go through anything. I thought about Sister Lois. We were talking about her today at home after service. She's one of the sweetest ladies that I know. She's just a precious lady. We fell in love with her when she first came to this church. And, you know, I saw her, I saw the tears this morning here before service crying about her, her mother. And she's going to have a hard time now here. I know it's been hard up until now. But she's going to have some hard days ahead of her. I, I thought when I come back in here and started praying for her when she left. And I, I thought, oh God, I, she's not in this thing by herself. I, she's not in this all alone there. I, you are with her, Lord. I, you're going to be her strength. I, you're going to be her comfort. I, you're going to help her get through I, this dark time. I'm telling you, friend, I, no matter what the day may bring, I, no matter how great it may be, I, I'm I'm telling you the God that we serve is greater still. I, I said God I, is greater still. I, and if we can walk on with him, I, God will help us I, every mile of the way until we get home. Hallelujah to God. So no matter what, keep on walking with God. Keep on reading your Bible. Keep on going to church. Keep on praying. Keep on living right. You know what's right and wrong. Come on now. I don't have to get up here every Sunday and tell you what's right and wrong. Many of you have been around church a long time. You know right from wrong. I, you got everything you need. You got a road map. Now come on now and say amen to this preacher. I'm telling you tonight, I, no matter what comes, I, let's stay in the race. I, let's keep walking with God. I, let's keep loving him. I, let's keep living for him. I, you say, Brother Shelton, I, I messed up in days gone by. That's all right. Get it right with God and get right up and keep on going forward. Keep on going forward. The Lord of glory is going to come. We're about to leave this whole world of sin. Woo! Hallelujah to God. I wish Gabriel's watching right now. He likes when I do that. Hallelujah to God. Brother Albright told me, or Sister Albright told me one. Little Gabriel's watching the service on the way out to home, out to church. And when I went, woo, this morning, he, liked, he did it. Woo, he liked when I do that. So that was for Gabriel. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that we're walking with God. Amen. There's times we feel all alone. You may have your family around you. You may have friends around you, but you can still feel like you're all by yourself. You can still feel all alone. 
But I'm glad, my friend, that whether you're in a spiritual lion's den, you're in a spiritual fiery furnace, whether you're facing a giant on the battlefield, I'm glad that the Lord is always with us. I said the Lord of glory, he promised us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, but go with us all the way to the end. When you're all alone, my friend, you better know when everybody else walks out, the Lord of glory he'll come walking in he'll be a friend that'll stick closer than a brother he'll help you he'll see you through it all somebody say amen but we know we're walking with God in the Bible according to the scriptures our Christian walk has been defined as a race Hebrews 12 and 1 said, Wherefore seem we are all so compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now you listen to me. When I was a little boy, I remember we used to have field day at school. Anybody remember that? And they had races, they had all kinds of competitive games. And you know, I remember we would we would race and I could run fast back then. Now I can't hardly walk without stumbling, but I could run fast back then. Or at least I thought I could. And we got up on that line, all of us boys, we're fifth or sixth grade. And you know, they, they said go. And we're running. I remember running so hard that I about fell down. I wanted to win so bad. And here come Donald Lilly, I believe it was, little skinny fella. Went by me like a rocket, like I was sitting still. And you know, the, the key to that was that the fastest one was the winner. He that could run the fastest would win that race. But the Christian race is a different kind of race. The Christian race is not the fastest one that's going to win. Solomon said that this race is not always to the swift. And Jesus tells us uh, that those that win this race, uh, it'll not be because you're the fastest, uh, but the ones that will win will be those uh, that will run the race of endurance. Those that will endure till the end. He said in Matthew 10 and 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. I'm telling you, this race is not a sprint. We're not trying to run as fast as we can, but we run to endure. What are you telling me? I'm telling you that every day that we get up, we're going to run with the Lord in this race. We're going to endure this thing. We're going to make it to the very end. I've watched people get saved. I've watched them come out of the chute full steam ahead. But it wasn't long you didn't see them anymore. But then I've seen that other kind. Those that got saved, those, you know, they, they battled at times. They struggled at times. I'm telling you, friend, every week they were there serving the Lord. They Listen to me. They, they had hardships at times. They got discouraged in the way, but they kept on pressing. They kept on enduring. I believe that when we get to heaven, there's going to be some people there that you never thought were going to make it, but they're going to make it there. I also believe that there's going to be some that won't be there that you really thought in this life that they were going to make it. Listen to me. It's not a matter how fast you can run, but whether you can endure this thing. But by the hand of God and by the help of God, we can face whatever and continue to stay in the race until we make it home. Can you give him a hand of praise tonight? The winners are going to be those who ignore the distractions, who press on through the difficulties, who ignore every opportunity to quit, and they just keep walking with God. They just keep moving forward with the Lord. You may not feel like running right now. You may not feel like you're leaping in your spirit. But if you stay in this race, if you keep walking with God, just like Brother Enoch, one day we're going to step right over in the glory land. 
I'm telling you, friend, sister, shut and I have been through some hard places in the ministry. You know, I wouldn't share all of them with you. We've been through some fights. If you've served the Lord, I, you've been through some battles. The apostle Paul told Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. It is a battlefield. We're on the battlefield of faith. I'm telling you, friend, the joy of heaven and the glories of that place outweigh by far anything that we have to deal with, anything that we have to struggle with, anything we have to fight against in this life. No wonder that song says, I believe I feel like running my last mile home. We're almost there, child of God. So don't you back up. Don't you quit moving forward. You just keep right on. Jesus is going to come. Keep walking with God. And one day you will rule and reign with him. Somebody lift your hands and give him praise tonight. Woo! Oh, my God. So if you're struggling, if the way feels hard right now, I want you to know the Lord loves you. <laughs> I felt the love of God here this morning. I feel the love of God here tonight. Maybe you got the weight of the world on you right now. But I'm telling you, if you'll just keep walking with God, if you'll just keep moving forward, you may not be moving fast, but as long as you're moving forward, friend, you'll endure to the end. You're going to hear him say, a job well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joys of thy Lord. Amen. There's an enemy that wants to hinder us and distract us. There's an enemy out there that wants to stop us. But we have everything that we need to make it to heaven. We have no excuse. Nobody has an excuse not to go to heaven. God has given us everything. He's equipped us with everything that we need to make it there. In Genesis 13, God gave Abraham some great promises. Verses 14 through 18 said, And the Lord said unto Abram, After that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou where there art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Listen to what he said. He said, Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plains of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an order unto the Lord. This is what God said. He said, look to the east and look to the south, look to the north, look to the west. I'm going to give you everything that you're looking at. He said, everywhere that you put your foot, you're going to possess it. It's going to be your land. You listen to me tonight. And the only thing that would have stopped Abram from occupying the land and possessing the promises of God to him uh, would be when he quit walking. As long as he's moving, as long as he's walking, uh, God said everywhere you place your foot uh, is going to be your land. Uh, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, the only thing that would have hindered Abram uh, was to have stopped walking. God said as much as the land that touches your feet uh, is going to be yours. You listen to me tonight. Uh, as long as Abraham kept walking, uh, amen, he was able to receive the promises of the Lord. Listen to me. If you want to go to heaven, I said if you want to inherit eternal life, you can't sit down and quit on God. You can't quit reading your Bible. You can't quit going to church. You can't quit giving what belongs to God. You can't stop praying. You can't stop living holy. But if you keep walking with God, you're going to inherit the promises of His holy word. You're going to call heaven your home one day. You're going to march right over into that glorious land. Amen. So don't give up and don't stop walking and moving forward. 
with the Lord of glory. The enemy always tries to trip us up. The enemy always tries to discourage us. He wants to ensnare our soul. All with the intentions of getting us to quit. Getting us to stop. Getting us just to lay it all down. The Bible shows us we have everything that we need from God. To be able to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Others may be going by you. That's all right. You just keep moving forward. If you stumble, it's all right. Get back up. Keep moving forward. If you fail the Lord, listen, I'm not advocating sin. I'm just telling you, amen. But if you fail the Lord, repent of it right then and just keep moving forward with God. Just keep walking with the Lord day by day. Every day that you get up, today I'm going to serve the Lord. Today I'm going to live right. Today I'm going to walk with the Lord of glory. I'm telling you, I don't know when it's going to be. It might be a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. But one of these days while we're walking with God, Mama, there's going to be a sound of a trumpet. There's going to be a shout from heaven. And the Lord of glory is going to call the church to come home and the Bible said in the moment in the twinkling of an eye we're going to be changed we're going to be with the king of kings and the lord of all lords we're going to finally call heaven our home can you give him a hand of praise tonight hallelujah to God so live your life for him walk with him Serve Him. and Do it every single day. Do it every single day. Walk with God daily. It is the best walk. It's the best life to live. I believe I could give Brother David, I, I tell you, I don't want to keep going on about this, but my heart, I told Sister Shelton today how happy I was to see Brother David back in church. I mean, it's better than Christmas time. Come on now. It's better than birthday gifts, I can tell you that. I said, he come in this morning, dear Lord, he looked like a preacher standing back there. I thought, did I call an evangelist to come and I'm not preaching today? He, man, I'm so glad, but he'll tell you, he can take this microphone, and he can tell you it's better serving the Lord. These young converts will tell you it's better than serving the Lord. These elders, you elders, you can say it's better walking with God. It's better than serving the Lord, living your life for Him. Come on now. It's a good thing to call Him Lord. It's a good thing to be able to call Him our Savior. It's a good thing to know Him in a crisis experience, a personal relationship. It's a wonderful thing to be called a child of the King. As long as Abram kept walking, he continued to inherit the promises of God's word. There was an old tactic used by the enemy. In years gone by, we find this in Judges 1 and 6. The Bible said, but Adonabazek fled. He was a king and they caught him. They captured him. And rather than kill him, the Bible said they cut his thumbs off. And they cut his big toes off. Anybody know why? I'm going to tell you why. They cut the big thumbs off because without the thumb, he couldn't hold a sword to fight. So without the thumbs, he's no longer able to war. They cut the big toes off because without the big toes, he's not able to walk any longer. He's not able to march anymore. He can't lead his army any longer. Now without the thumbs and the toes, he can't hold a sword, he can't hold a shield, and he can't march. Come on here now. Amen. I believe the old adversary. Listen, he don't have to get us to quit going to church. There's people going to go to church that's going to go to hell. There's people that don't go to church that don't serve God. The enemy doesn't have to kill us to make us ineffective. But if the enemy can cut off the big toes spiritually, if he can remove our thumbs where we can't hold the sword anymore, if he can remove the toes spiritually that we can't walk and we can't march, he'll cause us to sit down and die in our spiritual relationship with the Lord. That's why, my friend, we've got to keep moving forward. Always one step ahead of the devil. I said always one 
one step ahead of this enemy fighting and marching forward in the power of God Almighty hallelujah to God now this king though they did not kill him he is now rendered ineffective he can no longer fight and he can no longer march. I wonder how many people in our churches today that the enemy's taken off their thumbs spiritually. They've removed the big toes spiritually. That they can't fight anymore and they can't move forward. They can't march uh, with God any longer. In more recent times, armies would tape sharp, tape sharp, take sharpened sticks and would drive them in the ground with the pointed ends sticking up. They would fill the field with those pointed sticks in the ground and those, those adversaries, those enemy armies would come marching through those fields and without knowing those sticks were there, those sticks would drive through their feet. Once that happened, they are rendered ineffective. They can no longer march. Their marching days are over. That's why the Apostle Paul told us in Ephesians 5 and 15, See then, that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In other words, watch where you're going. Watch that you walk carefully in this journey today. The Bible said that we're to abstain from the very appearance of evil. If something even has the idea that it's not pleasing to God, you better leave it alone. I said, if it even gives the appearance that it's not pleasing to God, you better leave it alone because it will render you ineffective. It will cause you to stop walking forward with God Almighty. Little sins turn into big sins. Hidden sins turn into open sins. It's better to leave the sin in business to the sinner and for the saint to walk on with the Lord of glory. Can you give him a hand of praise? Come on, sister, get ready. i got to close here. I have to protect my feet. I have to watch where I walk and how I walk. Make sure that I walk carefully in this race. Does it matter whether or not I'm a spiritual giant? Does it matter whether I'm a spiritual superstar? Most people are not. Does it matter that if I fumble and stumble along the way and struggle along the way, really, what really matters is that no matter what, I keep moving on with God. I keep going forward with God. If I stumble, let God steady you. If you fall, get right back up. And keep going on with God. Keep walking with the Lord. I want to say this. To you here and those watching online, don't you dare let COVID stop you from serving the Lord. Anybody feel that righteous indignation toward this mess? There's people who say, I just can't serve God because of COVID. Well, how come people can serve the devil, but they can't serve God? Brother Benny, I missed you. I'm glad you're back. I love you. The sinners have not stopped sinning because of COVID. So why should Christians stop walking with God because of COVID? I said the sinners are still living in sin. They've been chomping at the bits for the barrooms to open back up. They'll go there with or without a mask. They don't care. They're still sitting right on. They hadn't let this pandemic stop them or slow them down one bit. They're still watching pornography. They're still drinking. They're still partying. They're still drugging. They're still caught up in illicit sex, all those things. They hadn't let COVID stop them from sinning. So why in the world would the church uh, let COVID stop them from walking with God? Somebody ought to say amen to this preacher tonight. I'm so sick of hearing people quitting church because of COVID. I'm so sick of hearing about, I've got pastor friends told me, Brother Shelton, I've lost a third of my church. I've lost a half my church because of this COVID mess. I'm sick of hearing about people won't give because of COVID. I don't want to kill this thing before we quit. We've done good so far. 
but the sinner have not stopped one bit of their sinning. So don't you let anything, don't you let COVID, don't you let trials, fiery trials, don't you let temptations, hardships, struggles, don't you let anything or anybody stop you from walking with your God. Can you give him a hand of praise tonight? Don't let pain, sickness, struggles, heartaches, hardships cause you to stop walking with God. God's the only hope and only help we have in this life and the life to come. What hallmarked Enoch and Noah and Abraham and all the other great people of the Bible is you'll find that they walk with the Lord. They walk with God. And God walked with them in fiery furnaces. Nebuchadnezzar said, didn't we not throw three men in that fire? Lo, I see four men in there loose walking around. And the fourth one is in the form of the Son of God. I'm telling the Lord to walk with you in the fiery furnace, the fiery trials. That lion in the Bible said, God sent an angel, shut the lion's mouth. I believe Daniel used one of them lions like a pillow that night to sleep on. God showed up in the lion's den. God walked on the battlefield with David, that little David, that little young that little young ruddy lad. You know, the battle, I told Sister Blanche the other day, Brother Clinton said, the battle does not make you what you are. The battle shows what you already were. Saul's a mighty king. Israel's a mighty army. They, I mean, these men walk around with their chest puffed out. These are warriors. These are great fighters. These are men that know how to battle. But the moment giant, that giant Goliath showed up, they turned like babies and run. Showed what they really were inside. But little David walked on that battlefield because he knew God was there with him. Took that giant's head that day. What hallmark the greats in the Bible. It, you know, these were men that had difficulties. They struggled. They, they went through hard places. But yet they knew God was with them and they walked with God. And God kept them. And God will keep you just the same. Will you stand tonight with me? They never gave up. They kept pressing. If you'll keep pressing with God, God will help you make it. God is our help. God being our help, we will make it. Can you raise your hands and love Him tonight? God being our help. Come on, saints, let's love him tonight. Tell him out loud you love him. Tell him how much you need him. I thought about Brother Benny. Brother Benny went through a major surgery here. With this going on right now, there couldn't nobody be in that room with him. The wife couldn't be in there with him. But I guarantee you the Lord of glory was in that room with him. The Lord of glory was in that operating room with him. The Lord of glory was in that recovery room with him. God is there with us no matter what we face in this life. Let me tell you something, Mama. Richard's not in that room by himself. I tell you, the Lord of glory is in there with him. Richard's a Christian man. I believe he loves God. I believe he and Pat both love the Lord. And he may not know where he's at, what's going on right now, but God's there with him. Uh, God's able to bring him out of that room. God's able to deliver. Let me tell you something. Uh, there's nothing that God cannot do. Uh, listen, I don't have to get up here and preach that to you tonight. You know that. Uh, read the book. Uh, he's a God of the impossibilities. Uh, is anything too hard for the Lord? God uh, can see us through it all, and God will see us through it all if we'll walk with him. I want you tonight, if you'll come, if you want to pray at your seat, if you want to come around these altars, if you've got problems tonight, if you're dealing with heartaches, you're dealing with sorrow, if you've got things that you're facing right now and you need God to help you, I want you to come and find your place in this altar. If you've stumbled along the way and you need God just to steady you, if you need the Lord to help you tonight, Let's come and talk to him. You can pray at your seat. You can come to the orders. He, he's got up here just like he's got right there where you are in your pew. Let's ask him to help us tonight. The Bible said when David came back there at Ziglag, the old enemy, the Amalekites, had came and they 
and captured all the women and children, their wives and their kids. They burned the city. David's own men wanted to stone him, wanted to kill him, blame David for it. But the Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And God touched him and God helped him. And David inquired of the Lord, should I go after them? And God gave him his orders and David walked with God. And God said, when you hear the sound of a mulberry going through the trees, then you go forward and attack David. Walk with God. David uh, let God lead him. And God gave him the victory after victory after victory.